Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the RTB2000 Mask Testing. In this presentation, we'll show you how to configure and perform mask tests using a Rodian Schwartz RTB2000 series oscilloscope. This presentation assumes a basic knowledge of how to operate the RTB2000. If you're new to the RTB, or if you'd like a brief refresher, you might want to watch the presentation, Getting Started with the RTB2000 Basic Operation, before beginning this presentation. Mask testing is used to determine if the amplitude of a signal remains within user-specified limits. This is most often done to detect errors or to test compliance of a digital, that is, square wave type signal. Masks are defined using limit lines, and a mask violation occurs if the signal crosses any of these limits. On the RTB, masks are created by first copying an acquired waveform, after which the limits are moved and or stretched to create a tolerance region around the waveform. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll show you, step by step, how to create and run mask tests on the RTB2000. To configure a mask test, first press the Applications Hard key on the front of the RTB, and then select Mask from the list of available applications. Mask testing can also be started using the Mask icon in the toolbar menu. The first step in running a mask test is to load or create a new mask. The Size Plus and Size Minus buttons are then used to scale the mask, something we'll go over in more detail in just a moment. The Setup button can be used for finer or more granular specification of the mask, as well as to define any actions to be taken when the mask is violated. Run is used to start the test, and results are displayed and updated in real time. The test can then either be stopped, or statistics can be reset using the appropriate buttons. One additional feature is Capture Failures, which stores violating waveforms using the RTB's segmented memory functionality. Let's start with creating a new mask. Masks are created from acquired waveforms, so the first thing we need to do is start an acquisition. The next step is to start the mask application and press New. A relatively tight mask will then be created around the acquired waveform. This may be difficult to see unless you zoom in or look very closely. To enlarge or shrink this mask, use the Size Plus or Size Minus buttons. Here we've used Size Plus several times to increase the size of the initial, automatically created mask. The mask appears as a thin white line around the waveform. Note that Size Plus and Size Minus scale the mask equally in both the horizontal and vertical directions. What if we want to scale the mask more in one direction than another? Pressing Setup opens the mask menu. Rather than simply using Size Plus and Size Minus, the parameters in this menu allow for more granular scaling and resizing of the mask dimensions. For example, we could expand the mask tolerances in the X direction, so the mask is more tolerant of variations in rise and fall times, but less tolerant of variations in the Y direction, such as ringing or overshoot. The Setup menu is also used to define which actions, if any, should be taken when a mask violation occurs. This includes playing a sound, stopping the test, generating a pulse on the aux out connector, taking a screenshot, or saving the actual waveform data itself. These actions also can be combined. For example, the RTB could take a screenshot and play a sound when a violation occurs. Mask test results are shown at the bottom of the screen. These include the absolute number of acquisitions and the elapsed time, as well as counts and percentages for both past acquisitions and failed acquisitions. Recall that the Reset button can be used to clear and restart the statistics during a run. Let's end with a brief summary. Masks are defined as limit lines around a waveform, and a mask violation occurs when the acquired waveform crosses any of these limits. Most often, Masks are used to test compliance or to check for errors. On the RTB, masks are created by first acquiring a waveform and then expanding or scaling the region around this acquired waveform. This can be done in several different ways. Once the mask is created, a mask test can be run, which yields both counts and percentages of compliant and non-compliant waveforms. In addition to producing statistical information, mask tests can also trigger actions when a mask violation occurs such as taking a screenshot, capturing the violating waveform, etc. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with the RTB2000 Mask Testing. 
If you'd like to learn more about how to use the RTB2000 or about other oscilloscope measurements, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.